DJI's latest pocket-sized wonder, the Osmo Pocket 3, has arrived and it's as compact as ever. It brings some exciting upgrades like a larger Type 1 sensor that users have been clamoring for. The addition of a nifty 2-inch screen that you can rotate for quick transitions between horizontal and vertical shooting modes is a definite plus. However, it's not all roses and rainbows. There's a noticeable price hike compared to the previous model, and the auto exposure feature can sometimes overdo it. Stay tuned as we explore the ups and downs of this gadget. Let's get right into it. Let's kick things off with the bright side and the standout improvement on the Osmo Pocket 3 is its beefed-up camera sensor. This time around, you're getting a more substantial 1-inch CMOS sensor, which translates to sharper shots, especially in tricky lighting situations like low-light conditions. The proof is in the pudding when you look at the expanded ISO range spanning from 50 to 6400 for both photos and video, and a remarkable 50 to 16000 for low-light video. Now, if we take a quick glance back at the Pocket 2, it was equipped with a smaller 1-slash 1.7-inch CMOS sensor and a less versatile ISO range, maxing out at 6400 for both photos and video. It's quite the sensor upgrade when you say. Now, when it comes to capturing those mesmerizing slow-motion shots, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 steps up its game. With 4K 120fps support in its slow-motion mode, you can expect your videos to be crisper and more detailed, adding a layer of excellence to your slow-motion footage. In comparison, the Pocket 2 is a tad behind in this department, limited to 1080p, when shooting at 120fps in its own slow-motion mode. That said, if you're after the quickest frame rate possible, both cameras can handle 1080p at an impressive 240fps. It's all about finding the sweet spot for your slow motion needs. The Osmo Pocket 2 and the original DJI Osmo Pocket shared a common trait, a fixed 1-inch color touchscreen. That's why the introduction of the Osmo Pocket 3's new 2-inch OLED touchscreen is rather exciting. What's even cooler is that this screen can rotate, allowing you to seamlessly switch between horizontal and vertical shooting modes. This change not only promises a smoother touchscreen experience, but also makes creating content for social media platforms feel like a breeze. It's a welcome tweak for sure. Now, after singing praises for our top three favorite aspects of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, it's time to address a minor letdown. One aspect that didn't quite hit the mark is the auto-tracking feature, specifically the device's inability to rotate a full 360 degrees. Instead, it reaches a point where it indicates that it has hit the gimbal's limit. This limitation might be a tad disappointing, especially when compared to other gimbals that offer a complete 360-degree rotation. It's not a major issue, but worth mentioning as we continue. Now let's tackle the elephant in the room, and it's a trend we see with many devices these days, the price. From a personal standpoint, I'd hesitate to recommend purchasing this device unless the content you're creating truly leverages its unique features. There are more budget-friendly alternatives out there, Insta360 Flow or Stick, with the DJI Osmo Pocket 2, which won't put as much strain on your wallet. Lastly, it's essential to note that this might not be the right choice if you prefer not to sync the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 with the phone for certain controls. And that's a wrap on today's video, where we've explored the highlights and the not-so-great aspects of this device. Now it's over to you. Will you be making the purchase? Your decision might hinge on how your content creation aligns with its features. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to catching you in our next video.